In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to plot scientific data in Excel. In this video, I'm going to be using the 2016 version of Excel, but the process is more or less the same um, in older versions of Excel as well. So the first step, which I've already done here, is to actually get your data inputted into um, a spreadsheet. And the easiest way to do this is to have your x values, so the things that are going to be plotted on the horizontal axis in the first column, and that's what I've got here, and then your y values, the values of your dependent variable that are going to go on the vertical axis in the second column, directly adjacent to your x values. So uh, my first point on my graph is going to be the point zero three in this example. And the graph I'm going to make here is a velocity versus time graph. Um, but this can be a graph of anything. And to do this, just highlight all the data. So I've got x values in the left-hand column, y values in the right-hand column. I've got everything I want to plot highlighted. And then the next step is to click the Insert button up top. And there's all kinds of charts over here under this chart section. What we want to plot to look at a mathematical relationship between two variables is almost always a scatter plot. These other sorts of plots are more useful for visualizing data um, and for other applications and finance and things like that. But for relationships that we're generally looking at in science, where we have a dependent variable and an independent variable, the scatter plot is the best tool to tease out those relationships and to get a concrete mathematical um, relationship between the variables. So what I want to, generally speaking, the best choice here is just the uh, scatter plot with no lines connecting them um, because those lines usually aren't very useful. So just the regular scatter plot where it's just going to plot your points for you on a graph like this. And here's our graph. Now it's not quite in a finished state right now. So the easiest thing uh, I find is to go up to this. So I've got the chart selected right now. And so I've got the chart tools menu open and I have this quick layout option in the top left. So I'm going to click on that, and generally, depending on your situation, you might use a different one, but most of the time, this very first option here is going to be the best one. It's going to give us the most important parts of our graph. So if I just, I went up to click layout, just clicked on the first option here, and what that gives me is a title, and titles for both of the axes. So this thing over here, if you're plotting more than one data set, you can use that as well, but it's not as important, so you can actually just remove that if you're only plotting one set of data in your chart. Um, and then you should give your axes and graph meaningful titles. So for instance, on this graph in particular, I'm looking at a relationship between velocity, which is the dependent variable, and uh, time, which is my independent variable in this case. So I'm going to plot type velocity for my y-axis, and Remember, since this is a scientific graph, they should always have labels um, complete with units. So in this case, my velocity measurements were in meters per second, so that's my unit that I'm going to affix to that axis. And also the horizontal axis, in this case, that's time. Now, of course, if you're plotting the relationship between different quantities, those would be different for your situation. Now I'm going to also give this a title. Um, So this is some data I took from an experiment where a ball was rolling down an, um, an inclined ramp, and so it was moving with a constant acceleration. And if you know some a little bit about physics, you'll know that the you can tease out the the acceleration value from this type of graph. And what you'll need to do that is a line of best fit, or otherwise known as a trend line. So there's a few different ways to go ahead and add that to our chart. The easiest way. Um, for me, usually, is just to click on one of the data points and go ahead and right-click on it, and that'll bring up this context menu. If you're not getting one that looks just like this, then you need to make sure you're actually right-clicking on one of the points, and go ahead and do Add Trend Line. Most cases, we're going to be looking at linear trend lines, but in some situations, you might use the other ones as well. Over here, there's the options for what we're looking at. I've selected linear, that's the default behavior, and then if you scroll down, it has options to display the equation, which we will almost always want. 
as well as this R squared value. Now, sometimes it, you might be okay to admit this, but I usually uh, like having it on my chart. So clicking that will also show that. That's just basically telling you um, how good this line fits the data. So the closer that number is to one, um, the better the line fits the data. And in this case, the number is 0.999, so it's pretty close to one. Uh, I have some good data here. Um, now I can move this equation around just so it's kind of not obscuring any of the rest of the graph. And if you want, you can actually, you don't generally have to do this, but if you want, you can actually go in here and uh, rename these variables. By default, it's going to say X and Y, but in my case, for instance, my Y variable is velocity, which I'll represent with the symbol V, and my X or horizontal variable is time, which I'll represent with the symbol T, so that's sometimes uh, nice to kind of make sure a chart make a little bit more sense uh, at first glance. So now with that step complete, this is a finished graph. So what I've got on here is all of the data points that I collected. I've got labels for both axes, velocity and time respectively, and I've got units affixed to those because that's very important to have units on your axes as well as labels. And I've also got a title for my graph. So that's uh, all the important features. So now that you've got this completed graph, in a lot of cases you're going to want to bring it into a word processing program such as Microsoft Word. Now the easiest way to do this is just to go ahead and right click on the graph and select copy from the options and then open up your word processing program and just go ahead and paste it in here. So right click and select paste or control V if you prefer the keyboard shortcut and that'll bring your graph into Microsoft Word. This would also work in something like PowerPoint if you're doing a presentation for instance. Now, the nice thing about staying within the Microsoft ecosystem here is that this graph that was created in Excel will still be a dynamic object in the Microsoft Word program, meaning that you can still, within Word, modify the, the graph labels, the equation, and all these sorts of things. So that's a nice feature if you stay within the Microsoft Office suite. All right, so this video has been a quick overview of how to make scatter plots and add trend lines to them in Microsoft Excel. Uh, I appreciate your attention to this video and I'll catch you in the next one.